In this video, I will show you how to find the tangent line of a trig function. So we've got this function f of x equals 2 sine x plus cosine 2x. And we want to find the equation of the tangent line at the point pi comma 1. If you want to find a linear equation, in calculus, probably the best form to use is called point-slope form which looks like this. y minus y1 is equal to the slope m times x minus x1. So for this form of a linear equation, you need two things. It's sort of given away by the name point slope form. All you need is a point and the slope. Well, guess what? We already have a point given to us in the original problem. We know that one point on the line is pi comma one. And this point is our x1 and our y1. So we already have x1 and y1 for this equation. The only thing we're missing is the slope. So how do you find the slope of a curve at a point? Hmm, isn't that the definition of derivative? So step one is to find the slope at the point pi comma one. But the slope of a curve at a point is the derivative. So we need to start by finding the derivative of the function f of x. So I'm going to go ahead and start calling this m uh, because that's going to be the slope. But we're going to go ahead and do the derivative. We can do the derivative of one term at a time. So let's start with the derivative of 2 sine x. When you have a constant in the front, you can just leave the constant alone and then do the derivative of sine. The derivative of sine is cosine. So that's it for the first term. Now let's take the derivative of cosine 2x. Be careful, this is a composite function. We have a function inside of a function. So we're going to need the chain rule. I always love to colorize this part so you can follow exactly what I'm doing. The cosine of 2x has an outer part of cosine and then the inner part is 2x. So according to the chain rule, if I want to take the derivative of this, I need to start with the derivative of the outer part. And the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So I'm going to go ahead and change this plus to a minus so I can write negative sine. And you leave the inner function unchanged. But then you have to multiply by the derivative of the inner function, which is 2. The derivative of 2x is simply 2. So this is the derivative of f of x. This is a function which is now telling me the slope. I just went ahead and put the 2 in the front. So we want to find the slope at the point pi comma 1. What really matters here is the x value. The x value is pi. So if I substitute pi for x, then that should give me the slope at the point pi comma 1. So the slope should equal 2 cosine pi minus 2 sine 2 pi. Interesting. Let's remember how the unit circle works. So we can remember the sine and cosine at these places. First of all, don't forget that pi is right here. Pi radians is halfway around the unit circle. The coordinates at this spot 
um, the coordinates here are negative 1, comma, 0. Cosine is the x coordinate always. So this is the cosine right here. So the cosine of pi is negative 1. So that gives us the slope is equal to 2 times negative 1 minus 2 times whatever's coming next. Now let's talk about the sine at 2 pi. Well, 2 pi is all the way around the unit circle and back again. So here's 2 pi right here. And of course, the coordinates at this position are 1 comma 0. But sine is the y value. So the sine at 2 pi is 0. So that means I have 2 times 0 right now. So that means this second term is gone. 2 times 0 is 0. So that's out of here. That tells me that the slope is going to be negative 2. So file that away. We're going to use this to help us find the equation of the line. They wanted us to write the equation of the tangent line through the point pi comma negative 1. Now, all we needed was the slope and a point. They gave us a point. We just found the slope, so we are ready to write this equation. Remember, we're using the model y minus y1 is equal to the slope times x minus x1. Don't forget that the pi is x1 and the negative 1 is our y1. So we're simply going to substitute these values, including the slope, into point slope form. So that's going to give us y minus, well, y1 is negative 1. Minus negative 1 is actually plus 1. And here comes the slope of negative 2. And then times x minus pi, because pi is x1. So this is the equation of the tangent line. Many teachers would accept this as your final answer. But sometimes you might want to rewrite this in slope intercept form, which just means getting y by itself and simplifying. Let's go ahead and do a little distributive property with the negative 2. So we would have y plus 1 is equal to negative 2x plus 2 pi. And then if we subtract 1 from both sides, we will have y equals negative 2x plus 2 pi minus 1. So this would be slope intercept form. Either way, we found the equation of the tangent line at the point pi comma negative 1. Let's take a moment to look at the graph so we can really visualize what we've done. We were given this crazy equation 2 sine x plus cosine 2x, it makes this crazy graph. And we were asked to find the equation of the tangent line at the point pi comma 1. And we found the equation of the tangent line. And here it is right here. Sure enough, uh, just, intersect, just intersecting the function f of x at the point pi comma 1. Uh, the first thing we did was we found that the slope was negative 2. And you can see that slope happening. And this is indeed the tangent line we were looking for. Example 2. Determine all of the values of x in the open interval 0 to 2 pi, at which the graph of f of x has a horizontal tangent line. So keep in mind, a horizontal tangent line means that the slope 
is zero. f of x, we're still using the same function from example one. So that's important because we already found the derivative of this function. And the derivative will tell us the slope of this function at any point. So here is the derivative that we found in example one. And we know that the derivative is the slope of the curve at any point. And we know that the slope is supposed to be zero because it's going to be a horizontal tangent line. So that means that this slope must equal zero. So all we have to do is solve this equation. Let's start by taking care of the easy part. Notice that we have a two in both terms. We're solving an equation now where the other side is zero. There's no reason why we can't divide both sides of this equation by two, just to simplify things a little bit. So let's divide everything by two, and that's going to give us cosine x minus sine two x is equal to zero. Focus on this part right here. I need you to think way back to your pre-calculus class when hopefully you learned about double angle identities because that's what we need to use right now. Specifically, we learned that the sine of 2x is equal to 2 sine x cosine x. So we should be able to replace this with 2 sine x cosine x. And I'm just going to bring down everything else. So we have cosine x minus 2 sine x cosine x is equal to 0. Now I'm noticing that we have a common factor. We have cosine x in both terms. So let's factor out the cosine x and see what happens. If we pull the cosine x out in the front, which means we're really dividing both of these terms by cosine x, that's going to leave 1 minus 2 sine x. Now, because of the zero product property, we can solve this by setting each factor equal to zero. So we can get one solution by setting cosine x equal to zero, and we can get another solution by setting 1 minus 2 sine x equal to zero. Uh, doing a little bit more work on the right hand equation, I'm going to uh, subtract one from both sides. So that will be negative two sine x is equal to negative one. And then if we divide both sides by negative two, we see that we have sine x is equal to positive one half. So let's think about the unit circle again. And you know, maybe I'll just bring this down to the same level. So we have cosine x is equal to zero, and we have sine x is equal to one half. Let's start with where does cosine x equal zero? So here's my unit circle. Remember that cosine is an x value. So I'm really asking, where are the x values going to equal zero? X values are going to equal zero here and here. So we have to be careful about what interval we're looking for. Glancing back at the beginning, I can see that uh, we're solving on the interval from zero to two plot to 2 pi, the open interval. So we can't use 0 or 2 pi, but anything in between those two values. So if we, as we go around the unit circle, this top position is pi over 2. And this would be 3 pi over 2, 
uh, this would 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. So this position is 3 pi over 2. So these are the two solutions to cosine x equals 0 on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So let's get a list going. So far we have x equals pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Let's see what additional solutions we can get from sine x equals 1 half. Well, long ago, you should have memorized every piece of information on this chart, including the fact that the sine of pi over 6 is equal to 1 half. So if that doesn't immediately jump into your mind, you need to pause this video right now and memorize this chart. This chart needs to be in your brain at all times. So the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. That tells us that the reference angle is pi over 6. So I'm going to draw all of the pi over 6s real quick just to uh, make it easy for you to follow what I'm doing. So pi over 6 looks like this. All right. Um, this is just a rough sketch. All right. We know that pi is a semicircle. So if I divide the semicircle into six portions, that should be pi over 6. You know, that should be 1 sixth of a pi. And I'm just going to do the same thing all the way around. All right, so these are all pi over 6s. However, the reference angles are in these four positions. Here, 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 and here. So we have pi over 6 above and below the x-axis. All of these are going to have a sign of 1 half. It's just that two of them are positive and two of them are negative. So where is the sine function positive and where is it negative? Remember that sine is a y value. y values are positive above the x-axis and negative below the x-axis. So we care about the positive ones. We care about this one and this one because sine is equal to positive one half, not negative one half. So what are these angles? Of course, the first one is simply pi over six. So the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. Pi over 6 is obviously a solution to this equation. But we have another solution over here. What is this? This is 5 pi over 6. All right, and you can see it. This is 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. The sine of 5 pi over 6 is also 1 half. So we're going to just add both of these solutions to our list, pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. So these are the solutions. And f of x will have a horizontal tangent line at these x values.